You cite some historical examples of groups who know they can't win, but they can't bear to lose. Is there one in particular that you feel is congruent with the moment we're living through right now? You know, uh, sitting here in Washington, D.C. this evening, uh, which has become an armed camp, uh, much as it was in 1861 when there were Union troops quartered in the Capitol building ahead of Abraham Lincoln's inauguration. That's the decade I go back to. I think about Southerners in, in those years who became convinced that if they stayed within the Union, uh, they would lead to the destruction of everything that they valued. They were wrong. Uh, they were paranoid. They uh, believed that uh, the preservation of, of human bondage was worth fighting for. Um, but they believed it, and, and they pushed the Union to the breaking point and ultimately seceded. Uh, we're a long way from 1861 right now, uh, but there are clear resonances with this moment. How do you see the path forward for Joe Biden? Our latest NBC News poll shows that more than a third of Americans say they do not accept Joe Biden's victory as being legitimate. Seventy-four percent of Republicans say that the Biden win was not legitimate. How do you govern that way? You know, there are two challenges here. One challenge is the one facing Joe Biden. What Joe Biden needs to do is materially improve the lives of ordinary Americans. Uh, he needs to bring the pandemic under control. He needs to help the many Americans who are struggling economically, have been struggling economically for years, uh, by giving them a, a way up, a, a way to lift themselves out of poverty, uh, a way to get security and stability. That's Biden's challenge. Uh, but he's not the only one we should be looking to at this moment. There's also a challenge for elected Republicans who lied to their constituents, who were willing to go along with Trump's false claims that he had won this election, uh, who encouraged the delusions, uh, who ultimately uh, reaped what they had sown uh, uh, on Wednesday, on January 6th, as a mob stormed the Capitol. Uh, it is up to those Republicans to steer their party back to the center uh, and to give us a functioning two-party system. That's not Biden's obligation. Every time I see that video, it makes me mad for an array of reasons. One is just watching people trampling all over the seat of a democracy that slaves built. There is sandstone in that building that was quarried in Virginia and trucked into the District of Columbia by slaves. And that makes me mad. On the other hand, I also feel mad because I can just hear the old folks and generations of civil rights activists saying, Damn it, we warned you. We told you this would happen if you didn't nip this in the bud and you didn't listen and now people are dead. Do you think America wants to learn this lesson? I don't know that we do. I would like to believe we do, but we have been warned about this for generations, since time immemorial. Are we ever gonna learn this lesson and get this right? You know, that capital contains the good and bad of America. Uh, it contains statues of American heroes like Rosa Parks. Uh, it, until recently, contained a great many Confederates who were sent there to represent their states in Statuary Hall. Uh, everything that is good about this country and everything this country has done wrong uh, is, is uh, literally carved in stone in that building. Um, and we have a choice before us. It's a choice that we faced before at critical moments. We faced it in the 1860s and we faced it in the 1960s. Uh, we get to decide what kind of a country we want to be. Uh, there is a chance to enlarge the circle of inclusion in this country, uh, to create a nation that embraces its diversity and gives every American an opportunity. That, that's not a Democratic message or a Republican message. I think of that as a very American message. Uh, but we have leaders of one of our parties who have turned away from that message. Uh, and that's the critical challenge. In the past, when that's happened, uh, it has gotten ugly in this country. It got ugly on January 6th. And I hope that it's a wake-up call. I hope that people uh, who didn't intend for it to go that far, who perhaps were cynically exploiting uh, the emotions of their constituents, maybe they were afraid of their constituents, uh, maybe on January 6th they saw where this was leading. And I hope that some of them at least will pull back. As you pointed out, uh, we've never had this many members of a president's own party vote to impeach him. Uh, many members of the Senate, uh, including some who had previously expected to object to the count of the electoral votes, many Republicans in the Senate ultimately affirmed it. There are reasons for hope, uh, just as there are reasons for deep, deep concern. Does history give you any particular cause for optimism? Any cases you can point to that buoy you along as we move forward? You know, I, I look in the early 20th century uh, when the Democratic Party uh, was a party that, that was racist. There's no two ways about it. It had uh, a president who resegregated the federal workforce. Uh, and that party lost. 
Uh, and then it managed to nominate Al Smith, uh, a Catholic, for president. And he lost. Uh, but he changed the coalition. Uh, he was able to take his party from being a racist and exclusionary party into being the party of FDR, uh, the party that would ultimately uh, go on to govern America for much of the 20th century. And he did it by recognizing that you could stick to your principles, but enlarge the circle of tolerance. Uh, so I do have hope. I have hope that the Republican Party uh, will pull the same trick off that the Democratic Party once pulled off, uh, which is remembering that it's there to fight for the votes of every American, not just to represent an embattled minority. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.